This is the Sunday that falls between the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it is dedicated to the commemoration of the 318 Holy Fathers of the First Ecumenical Council, who shortly after the persecutions came to the violent persecution that came to pass because of the uh, edict of Milan and the church came from underground and was able to worship freely there was another challenge that the church faced and that is the uh, false wrong heretical teachings that the attempt to change the entire content or the purpose or the meaning of the gospel so we commemorate the those holy fathers who through the first ecumenical council put the foundation of the correct understanding of the teaching that the Lord Jesus Christ taught, which the world, even today, tries to change and to pervert. And one of the perversion of the wrong teachings that we hear has to do with the eternal life. Often, the description of the eternal life that we hear, or the concepts that are supposedly to be biblical concepts, they are based upon speculations. Never mind if we talk about the eternal life from the perspective of other teachings or philosophies or religions. So the narratives that are circulates, circulating mostly about eternal life, they come from ideas and perceptions and concepts that have never been tested or verified. A quick look at mythologies and the ideas and the concepts of the ancients will show us such a vast variety of the understanding of the eternal life that has no base or way to be verified anywhere. Jesus Christ, as we heard his words, defines the eternal life as something very different from all religions and from all human concepts. Eternal life, according to the definition, the revelation of Jesus Christ, is not equal to eternal existence. Eternal life, from a Christian perspective, based upon what teaches what Jesus revealed is not equal to eternal existence. Man, creation, by the virtue of being created by God, has the eternal existence. Even when our, when our souls depart from our bodies and when we are turned into a corpse, that does not stop our existence. The existence of man past the point of being breathless and in a sense lifeless continues that existence continues in a different form man does not stop to, to exist but that is not eternal life eternal life is something deeper eternal life is an intimate 
profound personal relationship with the triune God, with the Holy Trinity, with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That profound, deep, intimate knowledge of God is the eternal life according to revelation and the teaching of Jesus Christ. Knowing God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is eternal life as we heard from the words of Jesus Christ when he was praying for his disciples, when he was praying for the church, and when he was praying for all the Christians. So the discovery of the true God is the eternal life. This discovery starts upon the earth, starts during our lifetime, is fulfilled, is completed after we are removed from the materialistic world. So the eternal life is to know that Jesus came from God. Eternal life is to believe and to know in deep form the salvation that Jesus brought to know this great, the greatest person ever in the, in the history of the, of the world, of the cosmos, and to be engaged in an intimate personal relationship with the Holy Trinity. So as I said, today's gospel focuses on very special prayer that Jesus did just before he left the world, just before he fulfilled the last part of the salvation by ascending upon the cross. And in his prayer, he said, I am not praying for them. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world. So he had dedicated this prayer for those that they came to know the eternal life, came to embark on this journey to those that believe in him. And also he said, and I think this is very significant for all of us, for you, I don't ask for this only. He's not asking only for the apostles, for the disciples, for the women, for the members, for the church at the time, but also for those who will believe in me through them. You were on Jesus' mind when he did this prayer. Everyone who would come to believe in Jesus Christ through the preaching of the apostles and the disciples and the church, in whatever generation, Jesus made sure that he said this prayer on your behalf. To conclude, the eternal life is what Jesus prayed, that all will be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us. That is the eternal life. It's the union of all believers, the faithful, those that accepted to be the children of God through Jesus Christ, being united with Him, and He is the agent of uniting all humanity through Himself with the Holy Trinity, 
and that is eternal life according to the revelation of Jesus Christ an everlasting profound deep intimate love relationship with God